we're going to be talking about the price process of excitotoxicity. Now, when we think about this process, it's important to realize that this is some sort of incident in the central nervous system, some sort of lesion, some sort of injury to the central nervous system. I'm going to be using it in the context of a stroke because I think that's the easiest way to understand it, but there are other things that can cause excitotoxicity. So we start off in the center here with a focal injury, and you're gonna be drawing this in and we're gonna need multiple colors as we go. So the focal injury occurs. So for some reason, this is, we're going to say, an ischemic injury where we've had a lack of blood supply. And these neurons in this little area die. Now, when they die in the central nervous system, they release glutamate. Now, we know and have heard of glutamate. In fact, we like glutamate because glutamate helps us grow our dendrites, right? We've, we've already discussed long-term potentiation. The unfortunate part is uh, that glutamate can be detrimental in large doses. So we know that we like it in small doses to help that uh, dendrite grow. But unfortunately, when all of this glutamate gets released out of the focal injury, it's not good. So you see this glutamate comes out and then we get this area around the focal injury that we're going to call glutamate overstimulation. So I kind of think about it as like death by chocolate. A little bit of chocolate's a good thing, but a lot of bit of chocolate is not. Same with glutamate. A little bit of glutamate is a good thing. It helps the dendrite grow, but a lot of it is almost too toxic or too much. And so we basically get this area of overstimulation uh, we know that glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter. So this is where we get the name excitotoxicity. These neurons here literally get excited to death. They have so much glutamate that they get so excited that they die. And that's the area of overstimulation. Now, when these neurons die as well, we are going to see that we get that glutamate gets released from these overstimulated, the extra glutamate gets released from these overstimulated uh, um, neurons. And we're going to see that, again, it's going to slowly spread out like ripples on a pond. But this area in the purple, we're going to see does not have uh, the intense amount uh, or density of glutamate that it did in, within the yellow circle. Okay, so this area out here, it's sick. I like to think about it. Edema, they're injured. They've been too stimulated by glutamate, but not enough to kill them, just enough to make them sick. So these neurons in the purple do not uh, feel good. They're not gonna work really well. But did they die? No, they didn't die. These areas died. And this was the initial injury that died. So initial injury, too much glutamate out, killed the yellow area by overexcitement. They excited them to death. And they released these neurons in the yellow, released the glutamate, and made the neurons in the purple kind of sick from too much glutamate. Now the area of edema from injury, this area can recover. Once we see the signs and symptoms of the inflammation kind of reduce and go down a little bit, we're going to see that these neurons are going to recover and return to function. This is going to be very important for us because we know that a patient who comes into a hospital, within the first couple of days, we're going to see the largest amounts of gains because they had the initial injury, the glutamate overstimulation, and these purple neurons decided not to work. So they're going to look pretty terrible as far as their functionality in that first day. But by day four to day six, we know that the inflammatory period should be going away at this point in time. And uh, we should see that these neurons out in the purple are going to return to their function. This is exactly the time where this patient is entering a, a rehab facility or a skilled nursing facility to get more intense rehab focused on a returning function to these areas and fixing, uh, maybe substituting for these areas. So this time frame aligns exactly with where we see our rehab processes for our patients.